Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am S. Prabhakar from the Delhi Entertainer. In today's program of conversation with achievers, I am mightily pleased to present a conversation with Mr. Harish Vaid, uh, one of the most senior most company secretaries in India, and he is like a Bhishma Pitamaha of company secretary profession. Mr. Vaid has a trailblazing career of over 45 years. during which he covered all aspects of company secretaryship and legal profession he immensely contributed to the growth and development of the profession of uh, company secretaries uh, by addressing thousands of conferences and seminars and contributing a lot as a council member of uh, north indian regional council as well as central council of institute of company secretaries of india in today's conversation we will take a nostalgic journey into the long and fulfilling career of mr harish vaid good afternoon mr vaid welcome to our program how are you doing fine mr prabhakar thank you very much at the outset i must say thanks for your generous introduction i don't know whether i deserve this much or not and i am really grateful for giving this opportunity of uh, having an interaction with me absolutely informal interaction and uh, before we proceed Uh, let's uh, uh, let me also acknowledge that today is a very auspicious day. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, this uh, Ram Janam Bhumi, and this uh, it's a very auspicious day, I must say. And uh, with these things, I think I we can proceed further, please. Welcome, Mr. Vaid. Uh, to begin with, uh, can you briefly tell about your uh, childhood, your uh, school days, and college days? Uh, frankly speaking, before we started this interview. we were just discussing between ourselves the basic idea is to really give the background how i came up whether my journey can be a motivating factor for even if it is a motivating factor for a single person i'll be really very happy i i feel that you would have done your job as far as my childhood is concerned of course we had a very modest beginning my father uh, was a school teacher we hail from uh, uh, raiders hill area in pakistan we were in pok then uh, during partition my parents shifted to indian side of course and as far as i am concerned i was born and brought up in delhi my education is delhi i job is in delhi and of course i wish to die in delhi so that is as far as uh, my upbringing is concerned my father was a school teacher with uh, six children three brothers three sisters and he had he was a man of principles he was very particular that he can provide us because the salaries of teachers they were very small very modest and big family and at that time we used to have like that only and uh, he used to tell us that food and education is my guarantee come what may it all depends on you uh, how much you want to educate i will do whatever is needed i will not see that your education is hampered you do your best in that field and he lived up to his promise so he was very particular about that i did my schooling in a government school from uh, tilak nagar in delhi then uh, after that i uh, it was of course as i told you i in the beginning it was a uh, uh, science stream i was supposed to be one of the studious boys in the school my name used to be in the merit uh, board of the school but uh, i don't know whether you will be knowing or not in the year 1968 there was a strike of the teachers in delhi okay. and uh, the delhi government they uh, promoted all the students okay without exams without exams okay and you know what happens at times uh, why i am quoting this instance that that was a turning point in my career my father wanted me to be a doctor i was in medical line up to 9th i used to talk as i told you but when we are in uh, we were in ninth standard and during the fagan teachers went on strike uh, with some demands which government didn't agree and government said okay we will not yield to the demands but let's try to 
promote these COVIDs. They promote these COVIDs. And that is a very tender age. And what came to my mind, and that is what, what is very, very important for grown up people towards their children also. What came to my mind, I am a student uh, boy, 9th to 10th they are promoted. Next year, again, they will have a strike. And uh, again, we will promote it. <laughs> and 11th is the board exam. So there is no problem. I will uh, study at that time. Why should I bother? Mm. So by focus, it got changed. From studies to, uh, you can say, I created team of gymnastic in my school. Mm. I created Bhangra team in my school. Okay. So those uh, leadership qualities, which were in a very subdued manner, they came up. And my focus got shifted from education to extracurricular activities. And I was captain of Malcolm team. Malcolm, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. climbing like yeah, monkeys. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. So all that uh, gymnastics, Malcolm, Bhagra, etc. Now, with the result that uh, 10th to 11th, we uh, somehow I could pass. And 11th when the exams came, mm. I was zero, obviously. So, with a with lot of uh, efforts, I could qualify my higher secondary with 40.5%. Right. So, that was a big shock for the entire family that a person who was thinking of, uh, was very bright child in the family and he was supposed to be a doctor. Then my father uh, said, okay, now we are not getting any admission anywhere. Mm. Uh, he uh, tried his best there used to be a course of pharmacy, diploma in pharmacy. He tried his best to get me admitted there, but the percentage was very high there. And uh, ultimately, he was he was frustrated. And so was I because I was accompanying him. I was feeling very bad how my father is being treated everywhere, wherever he is going. Mm-hmm. They are saying no admission, no, these are no marks. It really kept on pricking me and hurting my mind and heart. Ultimately, he went to the director, director of education, and he told that I am also a teacher, he is my son, mm. I know the psyche of students, I know he is a bright child. Somehow, he went into the wrong side and uh, he has suffered and I want one opportunity to be given to him. So somehow, director of education, he got impressed and he said, look Mr. Vahid, I can't give him admission this uh, pharmacy okay. but I can give him admission in commercial practice okay. so these were the two diplomas which were being run in uh, uh, Pusa Road you know, Pusa Road, yeah. Institute of Commercial Practice okay. and okay. Institute of Pharmacy were there mm. so this is how uh, I got shifted to commerce line, commerce line. Okay. but from that day onwards because that is what, what hurt me that my father is being treated like that and mm-hmm. I was, this is what I have suffered in life and once that feeling comes in mind, mm. that's the real thing, that was the turning point. First feeling that no problem, I am a student person, where the problem, again this strike will be there and I will get mm. uh, good marks in high school, mm. 11th, mm. At, the, at that time we used to have up to 11th. Yeah. So from that day onwards, there was no look. Okay. I uh, used to be always second in batch. Mm-hmm. This was a two-year diploma. So first was a wonderful uh, friend, uh, Mr. Subhash Ahuja. Mm-hmm. Very brilliant chap. Between me and him, there used to be a competition. But he always used to be first. I used to be second. And it was a big batch of, I think, 45, 50 students. And uh, he was also from a very, very modest family. Uh, and... Uh, first year, second year, and after that, uh, very good percentage, no looking back, always 75 plus. Uh, then uh, uh, I got appointment in a private company, a private firm. Okay. You must have heard the name of Bhim Sanyi College, mm-hmm. Kajal, mm-hmm. Kajal, mm-hmm. Kajal mm-hmm. Madhari Brothers. Mm-hmm. So two years I worked there. Okay. But again, along with education? Along with education. Okay. Now, basic factor is when it hurts your mind then you try to punish yourself mm. and that is what I thought man. I must pay for this these three years which I have lost mm. and you will be surprised I used to go for a part time job in the beginning in the morning 
mm. with, a, with an export form. Okay. I used to write their accounts, mm. his correspondence I used to attend. Then around 9 o'clock, 7 to 9, come what may, whether so I was... morning used to go to work, work huh? 7 to 9. 7 to 9 work. Okay. 7 to 9. Mm. Irrespective of the weather, whether it is cold, raining season, winter, summer, whatever. Mm. Then at 9 o'clock, I used to come at, back. We used to live in Maltown. And uh, this private firm was also in Maltown. And that my whole time employment was also in Maltown. Okay. So I used to go by bicycle. Mm. From there to private and to part time, come back, and from there pick up my tiffin. And by nine thirty, I used to be in the regular job, Murari Brothers. And of course, punctuality of time and discipline that was inculcated in me right from day one. Mm. Then I simultaneously joined one uh, post diploma in commercial practice also. Okay. So that was in the evening classes. So from there I used to go for evening and used to come back by about 9.30, 10. Then uh, simultaneously I joined BCOM. And two years... Achha, I, this is apart from BCOM, you have done these diplomas. Yes. Okay. Yes. First diploma and then... Achha, first diplomas, then yeah, graduation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Then I did my... Uh, I joined uh, government job in 75, I think. Uh, 70... 1970, I qualified this, uh, uh, my higher secondary. Yeah. 72, I did my diploma. Okay. Then uh, 72 to 75, okay. I did my BCom from correspondence course. Okay, correspondence related. Okay. Correspondence course. And th during this period, mm. I was selected in government uh, in uh, registrar of companies. Okay. So there, uh, I joined as PA to the registrar. Okay. For about an year or so, I was his PA. And uh, then there was uh, a position of uh, junior technical assistant, okay. JTA. Uh, from direct recruitment I came because the education and uh, qualification was become by then I had done my become. Mm -hmm. So in 75, the moment I qualified, I got um, this thing uh, as JTA. Okay. Then uh, there is a what, uh, 20 or 21? Uh, yeah, I am 54 job? born. Okay. 54 born in mm -hmm. 78, in 75 I became JTA. Okay. So you can say uh, how much? 54, 75, 21. Yeah, 21. And that's 21. 21 year into government job. 21. Okay. No, and, uh, uh, one and a half year prior to that, about 20. Achha. At the age of 20. Because at the age of 18 I started my job. Oh my God. Uh -huh. Two years I didn't uh, private. private. Yeah. Da, not private. Because one thing was very clear in my mind. Mm -hmm. Now I don't want my father to. Mm -hmm. Feel bad about <laughs> Feel bad. what has happened. And thereafter, not a single penny liability I gave to my father. Okay. Everything I earn and learn. Okay. That's a policy I adopted. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, 75, then simultaneously, I once I became JTA, mm -hmm. I continued my studies. I did my law mm -hmm. from law faculty, okay. uh, law center one. Okay. Again, evening classes. And uh, my office used to be, ROC office used to be in Kanchanjaga building at that time. Yeah, I know. In yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother did training there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, Kanchanjaga building, we used to, from there, 4.30 office used to be up to 4.30. Mm -hmm. Then in the evening, I used to go to uh, Campus Law Center 1. So, very near from there, yeah. Mandir Mark. Uh, yeah. Their regular schedule was straight go to the sports room. Okay. Play table tennis okay. and uh, law faculty union uh, activities. Mm. Uh, I was uh, union. That was a three years uh, this thing. Three years, three years law. Three years, three years law. Mm -hmm. Regular course. Okay. And uh, everybody knew that from five o'clock to six o'clock, mm -hmm. I'll be in sports room. Okay. And just adjoining the sports room, we used to have the union room. Okay. So either in uh, union activities or this, because I used to be. Uh, class representative also and okay. all those other things. And uh, 6 o'clock dot, I will be in the classroom. Mm. Absolutely regular in classes. will go prepared and uh, absolutely perfect. Mm. Uh, receiving the lectures and enjoying them. And you'll be uh, happy to know Mr. D.C. Jain was my batchmate. Okay. Law faculty. Mr. Okay. D.C. Jain was yeah, the president. Yeah, yeah. Of, he had been president yeah, of the yeah. institute. Uh, my brother did training uh, from him. Achha, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then for or in Dalmias? Dalmias. Uh -huh. So, 
I think it's obviously somewhere in, in the same way. Yes, yes, yes. It was there. It was there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was there only. Mm-hmm. That is in Hansala building. Yeah, Hansala building. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, we used to travel together mm-hmm. from uh, after closing our, I mean, after finishing our classes in La Faculty, mm-hmm. we used to travel together to, uh, he also used to live in that side. I was in Mall Town. He used to live near Ghantagar. Okay. So, we used to travel together in the bus, mm. discussing. In fact, he is the main person mm. who guided me. Okay. There are two persons, in fact. One was uh, in the Institute of Commercial Practice, which I told you. Mm. One of my professors, I got very high regard for him. He and his wife, both were there. Mr. O.P. Uh, O.P. Gupta Ji, okay. very senior person. Mm. And uh, Mr. O.P. Gupta guided me. Okay. Then he was uh, company secretary. And he is also our member. Okay, member of industry and he services. told me okay. after law, yeah. uh, he told me that you should do computer secretary. And Mr. Mm-hmm. Dijan also um, said there is a course. We never knew what is the course of computer secretary. Then mm-hmm. he told me, Mr. O.P. Uh, OP Gupta he told me, mm-hmm. but then he said that I am, he used to be NIRC chairman at that time. Okay, Mr. Jain. Mr. Jain. Okay. So he told me, and then that is how I got shipped to inside. Okay. In fact, uh, after doing my law, uh, option was to join the bar. Mm-hmm. And uh, I must say, I was a very good performer in law faculty, very good performer. I was uh, chairman of academic reforms committee, mm-hmm. where uh, uh, I had uh, presented a lot of reports to the uh, on, on, uh, university. Mm-hmm. Based on that, the grading system had come. There were some modifications in the grading system. Okay. I was editor of... Uh, Nyaika, there was a magazine, uh, official in house magazine, yeah, in house magazine, mm-hmm. and a um, lot of other activities. Then, of course, uh, after doing Mila, option was there, but again, family circumstances and uh, government job, and then shifting and going to practice was a big toe. Yeah. What will happen? Government job, and mm-hmm. you got uh, promotion, and uh, chances are bright. And at the same time, God had been very kind to me. By simultaneous with my education, mm-hmm. I used to get promotion. Okay. And you will be happy to know that the moment I qualified my law, mm-hmm. I'm qualifying my BCom, mm-hmm. I immediately got JTA. The moment I qualified my law, mm-hmm. there was a vacancy in UPSC. Mm-hmm. Rather, there were eight vacancies of senior technical assistant. Okay. There was class two non registered position there, mm-hmm. non registered. So, uh, UPSC direct interview were there, 120 people were there in the interview, mm-hmm. 8 were selected and uh, by God's grace I topped that batch. Okay, and a uh, lot of our colleagues uh, who were there in my batch, Mr. T.P. Shami, Mr. Rakesh Chandra, they all retired at very senior positions, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, region okay. director, etc. Mm-hmm. Then uh, that is how uh, it progressed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I became STA. Mm-hmm. Three years I worked there in that capacity, mm-hmm. in the, and I was posted in Ministry of uh, uh, At that time it was Department of Company Affairs, mm-hmm. now Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Mm-hmm. So I was posted there, in the mainly in investigation wing, okay. inspection investigation, two zero nine A and mm-hmm. two thirty five to thirty seven. <laughs> so mm-hmm. those are the experiences. Okay, that is how it went on. Great, that is great. So those days, that is. Uh, late uh, 60s or early 70s uh, it used to be everybody's dream including my father's dream that the children should get into a government job because it was perceived to be a very secure job and uh, uh, you know career path is secured and uh, you know study and uh, you got into a government job at a early engaged worked for some time and uh, what made you uh, to think that i should do more courses like uh, law and uh, company secretaryship and after doing them how difficult it was for you and especially for your family, father and um, if you are married uh, for your wife that you are leaving a government job and uh, trying to go to a private sector. Can you share uh, your experiences at that time? It's a very uh, interesting question you have put. I must say uh, two things. One, the, the guiding factor for me and the motivating factor for me as I said in the beginning was that I was trying to punish myself. I was trying to always remember that how my career changed. 
and how my father had to go from door to door for my admission yeah. that is something which went on it is haunting me till now mm. i must say and my father of course as i told you very humble beginning he was a teacher in government job and during that period as you rightly observed government job was a big thing getting in and then luckily as i told you i got two three promotions in six seven years mm. i got two promotions mm. but somehow that motivating factor it was always coming to my mind that my target is somewhere else my target is somewhere else and the way i was getting i still remember one word used by one of the officers in the ministry he says mr swad you are not only running you are galloping okay. in your career <laughs> you are galloping so that word i will always remember mm-hmm. so by god's grace yes i used to uh, work day and night you see again at times i'll i'll say uh, at least for the benefit of those who might be in the nascent stages of their career mm-hmm. that once you reach a level people feel that yeah his life is very comfortable mm. but people don't realize how much hard work one has put it may be he me and you anybody else unless hard work is the key to the entire process unless you put hard work you don't get anything and uh, government job it was a big security you will be surprised that when i resigned from there to join the private sector for initial around 10 years long 10 years mm. my father used to be really concerned and worried about me <laughs> because at that time in private sector hire and fire used to be there yes, of course and there was no security of job as against that my future in private in government at that time was very bright because mm. i had the qualifications my hard working my my grasp of this uh, compila my way of tackling things my seniors are very happy and i must say even today i enjoy a good will in the ministry that yes though lot of people have new people have come but there is a, a people they do recognize mm-hmm. so lot of hard work was there but shifting again as i told you i i was i i had left lot of things to my to almighty i was only wanting i should go i should go i should go mm. and having lost the opportunity of joining the bar mm. if i would have joined the bar i think the way i was doing i am confident i would have uh, achieved some good position there also mm. but uh, no regrets because by god's grace uh, 40 years in jp group now yeah so i got my membership on 1st january 82 okay my membership of the institute Mm-hmm. because as i told you 72 to 75 graduation mm-hmm. 75 to 78 by law mm-hmm. then 78 to 81 mm-hmm. uh, the cs, the CS mm-hmm. mid mid 81 mm-hmm. and then uh, uh, till december i did my training with dcm mm-hmm. with uh, mr tv nayan swami who i consider my guru yeah nayan no, swami so i i had undergone training with him mm-hmm. and at that time dcm used to be one of ah, the best yeah, companies yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the top most companies in in uh, delhi in northern part of india mm-hmm. and uh, first january 82 i got my membership okay. and on the same day i was i joined this group i resigned from government and joined here mm-hmm. i was lucky enough to have been shortlisted by two three other major groups mm-hmm. so rajpal group and others okay. but i was very keen to be working here in delhi mm-hmm. so i took the chance and this is how i came here in private sector okay. Uh, now uh, this question will be interesting to uh, some of the new students of uh, Institute of Company Secretaries of India. Over a period of time, you know, the course contents always keep changing. When you did your Company Secretary, first of all, was it a degree or a diploma, or, and uh, whatever it was, whether diploma or degree, uh, how many papers used to be there, how many groups used to be there, and uh, how is the paper setting? I understand earlier the paper setting used to be like you know like graduation. Can you just uh, uh, educate uh, all of, all of us, especially the youngsters, how the course content was there at that point of time, and especially how is the training nowadays? Training is very rigorous and almost two years. So, what was it at that time? 
I must say the profession has has evolved over a period of time. It has developed a lot. When I say profession, I am talking profession as a whole, mm-hmm. whether the course contents, or the the job contents, yeah. or the practice area which was never there earlier. Mm-hmm. Course content wise, also it was quite tough. It was quite tough, mm-hmm. and uh, at that time we used to have inter and final. Okay, and. Uh, because it's a very old story and I have also mm. grown old. I am 70 <laughs> now. Mm. So I might not be uh, recalling the names of the subjects and all those things. But I mm. do recall in Inter we used to have I think four subjects, uh, two groups of four subjects each. Okay. Eight. Okay. Eight. Okay. And in final also, uh, again, uh, two groups of four subjects each. Okay. Total followed 60. by training. Mm-hmm. And it used to be six months training. Okay. Six months training. Okay. And the best part was that nobody will get any exemption in training. Okay. That is the the tradition right from day one, mm-hmm. and uh, even now mm-hmm. uh, nobody is, is getting training. Okay. We used to have uh, we were required to undergo training either in corporate sector or in government departments or in stock exchanges like that. Different uh, categories were there. Mm-hmm. Uh, some periodical training was there, and uh, vestibule training was there. But we uh, didn't used to have at that time the. Uh, SMTP or MSOP subject, etc. Okay. They are they are introduced later. Later, okay. So that was our uh, education uh, when we were students. We used to be regular in evening classes. Okay. The uh, faculty was very dedicated faculty. Mm-hmm. Mr. Gul Rajani was used to be there in Kampila. Okay. Very thorough person. He uh, and other faculty members they used to tell us what exactly the course is. Yeah. And frankly speaking, we have passed through that stage when uh, company secretary people used to used to say secretary means a private secretary, private secretary stenographer. Yeah, steno, steno secretary. It yeah. was a big yeah. big challenge yeah. uh, to convince the society. No, we are also like yeah. like uh, chartered accountant, like cost accountant. Yeah. By God's grace, we surpassed the uh, costing institute. But uh, big long journey, long journey. Yeah. So course contents were like that. I used to have very strict marking, very strict marking, and uh, faculty was very sincere, and so were the students as well. And now, of course, entirely different course contents are different, the uh, systems are different, yeah. training is different. At that time, it was okay. So, well, at that time, very few companies were mandated to have a company secretary, and uh, uh, of course, the number of companies are also used to be very less. So how uh, difficult it was uh, for a company secretary qualifying to get a job in a private sector and I think uh, practice was almost non-existent at that point of time. So uh, of course you said that you immediately got into JP but in general uh, in the profession how difficult it was in those days? First of all as far as practice it was just non-existent. It's non-existent. Yeah. People didn't know what practice is. And as far as uh, I am concerned I had been lucky enough that I was handpicked and handpicked because of my experience in Ministry of Affairs yeah. yeah. and uh, I used to be quite famous over there and the corporate sector who sort of were dealing they knew my dealing they knew my way of handling the things so uh, there were people who uh, really handpicked me I was lucky enough I must say and uh, as far as my peer group are concerned they of course had to struggle mm. uh, because uh, there were hardly any positions yeah. and uh, compulsory appointment extra was not there mm. later yeah. so to that extent I must say they had to face some difficulty mm. but by and large gradually uh, people got adjusted the best part was anybody joining the organization entry was a bit difficult mm. but our members they really worked hard they made their place in their respective organizations. Yes, that's important. Anybody, yes. anybody, and yeah, that is and what brought the credence. That. that is what brought the credence to the profession. Yeah, that's it. That's what what made the place which we are where we are today. Mm-hmm. And because any profession is made of its members, its yeah. constituents. Yes. So at that time, uh, uh, you and your, as you said, your peace. Uh, uh, did you perceive the bright future the CS profession would have and the way we have now as you say that I know that a lot of company secretaries including you, my brother, uh, I myself to some extent and many people 
uh, have commanded a great respect in the profession as well as in the companies they work now in practice also. So at that time, did you perceive that uh, by this time the profession will grow like this or just took like any other job or, a, you know, a better profession than a government job? I, I think I will not be wrong in, in saying because uh, I was on both sides of the profession. Mm. I was in job as well as in the institute. I got elected to regional council. Yeah. I became vice chairman, chairman. Then six terms I served uh, with the support of mm-hmm. well wishes mm-hmm. like you, mm-hmm. your brother, mm-hmm. Sudhakar, mm-hmm. Prabhakar, many others. Six terms I was in the central council, laying down the policies, um, manning the positions, chairman, um, examination committee, all other all the um, all that I will say is that in the beginning I am going back to that what you had asked mm-hmm. in the beginning we never visualized where we will be nor did we think frankly speaking think when I say think we uh, we didn't want to focus where we will reach yeah. we really wanted to struggle hard hard and hard and we have to establish ourselves you see first get the recognition we, uh, what is this profession? People should know. What can we do? We were in very, very close liaison with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Because that was our, our we were supposed to be extended arms of arms the of ministry. ministry yes. That was our, our uh, parent ministry. And uh, uh, they also supported us a lot. We definitely try to have very good liaison with them to tell them that if you really want to implement and regulate the companies through Companies Act, you need to have some person who can guide the profession, uh, the, the, the corporate sector, what exactly corporate culture is. And we took upon ourselves the responsibility of bringing in the corporate culture in the companies. In my own company, if I can uh, recall, when I joined a small private limited company, when I say small, I am talking with reference to the number of shareholders. It's a private limited company. And, uh, uh, but size-wise, yes, its turnover was, I think, around 100 crores at that time. They were pioneers in their field of engineering, construction of dams, garages, yeah, tunnels, know. underground powerhouses. So they were basically construction engineers. Yeah. And they were very happy there. And, of course, it was a, originally a partnership firm converted into private company, so you can understand the yeah. corporate culture. <laughs> yes. And during that period... The line of it is... <laughs> okay. Mm. So, nobody understood what mm. exactly it is. Mm. But gradually, uh, my uh, first uh, member of our institute, who was secret- first secretary in the group, mm. was Mr. S.D. Melwal. Okay. Then, I uh, he brought me here. And... Uh, after a couple of years, he was shifted to finance and I continued. I was given the responsibility of secretary. Okay. And in a company secretary assignment, we brought in the culture of board meetings, board, and uh, instead of informal, you know, take a daro chat in the board <laughs> meeting, it was very. And I must say, the type of sport and the, you can say, the desire. Uh, came from uh, my founder chairman, mm-hmm. Jack Prash Gorji. Mm-hmm. That was tremendous. Without that, it would not have been possible. Yeah. He always used to tell me, Look, whatever is required, please see to that. And uh, we sought to it, introduce the systems, and uh, ensure proper corporate governance. Mm-hmm. We went public and conversions and restructuring, a lot of things were done. Mm-hmm. So, uh, one more thing I wanted to know uh, for the benefit of the younger professions. Uh, you have seen the license Raj and the CCI days and uh, 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 permissions and approval for a very small little thing. So, how was the, uh, the atmosphere at that point of time and the slow moving uh, activities in the company compared to post liberalization uh, what's happening nowadays everything is self approved <coughs> so can i just i think you might have handled a, a issue even the cci days yes also. yes cci and days uh, these are very interesting cci mm. days and mrtp and ah, mrtp exactly yeah. so <laughs> these two <laughs> things one can never forget yeah. and uh, to that extent i must say i have been lucky enough mm. to have seen all the periods mm. 
to have seen CCI period. When getting a right issue, mm. the pricing was yeah. controlled by controlled the government. By CCI, yes. <laughs> it was controlled by CCI. Yeah. And frankly speaking, mm. at that time, mm. uh, Mr. Oren Bansal, mm. he used to be the controller of capital issues mm. during my period. And uh, he was known to be a very liberal and open-minded and uh, forward-looking officer. In spite of that, mm. I remember we wanted to come out with the right issue at uh, 19... Uh, we wanted to be... You know, 10 rupees here, we wanted to, to come out with 30, 25 to 30 rupees. Mm. But they gave us 18 rupees. Mm. 18 rupees premium or total? No, no, total. 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 8 rupees premium. premium. 8 rupees premium. <laughs> yeah, that was... Oh, my goodness. And for that, also the amount of calculations, yeah. amount of projections we had to give, we said, no, we can't give. Mm. And it was a pleasant surprise when one fine morning we say it is three pricing. Mm. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Yes. And the, the struggle which we had to undergo mm. for getting the uh, premium of 8 rupees. Mm. My goodness, I can't forget. Because I, I, I give an example, like, you know, in cricket, uh, uh, Duckworth Lewis uh, yes. formula, nobody understands. Yes, yes, yes. In those days, CCI used to be like that. Nobody could understand yes, how to arrive at the price. Yes. They will keep on asking you, but will never tell what exactly, exactly. is, is troubling their it? mind. Uh, what is troubling yeah. their mind? Uh, ultimately, they give a price and uh, that is just like sacrosanct. Just, just, that is sacrosanct. Mm. So, those are the days we had seen. Mm. Then, uh, during the regime of uh, SEBI also, mm. free pricing, we were all surprised how it is possible here. Yeah. Mm. And then we, we saw similar uh, shift mm. uh, mm. in MRT. MRT yeah. Suddenly, 100 crore limit, limit was increased to 100 uh -huh. crore, from 1 to 20, 20 to 100 crores. Mm. So, the government, uh, I think, uh, came up to the expectations of the industry. Mm. They uh, blessed the industry with liberalization also. At the same time, with stringent regulation was also there. Mm -hmm. And uh, frankly speaking, uh, if you go by the experience, mm -hmm. the, when the CCI was replaced by uh, SEBI, mm -hmm. at that time, very small enactment was there yeah. on SEBI. Yeah, I know that. I know. And uh, gradually, my goodness, now mm -hmm. it is voluminous. 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 <laughs> So secondly, uh, you know, company secretaries are uniquely uh, blessed in the sense that they get an opportunity to interact with the board and the chairman, managing directors, other executive directors, which uh, in the company, many people working for many long years, even at a senior positions, don't get an opportunity. And of course, uh, it has a flip side as well. It's a double-edged weapon that uh, you have to burn your toes and uh, be up to that, that to face the board members and other things. So, in the beginning, <coughs> how overrun uh, you by the board or the chairman or other people and how you managed yourself coming from a junior level in the central government uh, to a senior position and uh, facing the board director of a reasonably fairly big size company. So, can you share your experiences at the board meetings and uh, how you conducted Again, yourself? Again, I will say, in my case, it had been, maybe I don't know whether everybody passes like that. But uh, in my case, it has been a very interesting journey. As I told you, uh, even when I was in government, my conduct, my behavior, my hard work was entirely like a private sector. That is something which really helped me. You'll be surprised, even while in government, I used to carry the inspection reports and my uh, other papers home. Mm -hmm. On Sundays, I used to walk at home. Okay. And uh, uh, I still recall, I mean, Saturday, we used to have six, uh, five days week, and six days week at that time. Mm -hmm. So, um, on, after closing my office desk on Saturday, mm -hmm. when I again used to go on Monday, Mm. I used to put up many files to my boss and he used to be surprised here. Saturday ko to gay the aaj kya? Dobara kahan se gaya? He knew, I used to walk up. Now, since that, I must say, and uh, I was in inspection investigation, used to rub shoulders with senior officers, mm. used to rub shoulders with the, with the private sector, mm. with the corporate sector. So, to that extent, I was in a better position. So this this transition was smooth for me. Okay. Transition was very smooth. And again, there also, as I told you, it was a gradual uh, transition. 
in the sense it was a private limited company first mm. yeah without any corporate culture okay. so whatever i used to say they rather used to follow me okay instead of me uh, i following them mm. they used to follow me mm. that that doesn't mean that whatever i say will do that means i have to walk hard and yes. and really tell them that this is the right thing to do yeah. otherwise it's not very easy to convince mm. uh, everybody you know mm. so uh, they used to really uh, go by what i used to say that is one and then uh, after private limited company it became public limited company then gradually uh, nominee directors came funding was taken from the institution earlier it was no debt company okay. so institutional nominees came then independent directors concept came over a period of time uh, the law in captain chiji and i was lucky enough that on my board board was adored by very senior level people mm-hmm. very senior level people from all walks of life very senior ice officers very senior uh, institutional uh, nominees and uh, others uh, i must say so okay. that guided me and of course you have to be on your toes as yeah, you rightly said <laughs> as you rightly said you have to be thorough in in your subject yeah you have to really create an impression that you know the subject and you will be properly guiding the board assisting yes. the board yes. it is not that you are attempting to mislead them or you are superficial yeah. they are very intelligent people i tell you they are very mature people and each one of them is director in in various companies uh, yeah. so where and this is what when i was a faculty member i used to take classes in my institute also mm-hmm. you know so uh, i always used to tell my uh, students that secretary is secretary the same expectation because you who is just joining the profession you will expect the same respect to be given to you by the board mm-hmm. similarly board will also expect the same uh, you know uh, knowledge from you as they are expecting from a senior person of 15 years 20 years experience yes. because you are expecting that so therefore each member of my profession mm-hmm. whether he is junior or senior has to to perform has to work hard rather the owners on the on the youngster is much more than on the seniors mm-hmm. seniors carry with them the experience through experience they can still carry on mm-hmm. but juniors they have to work very hard mm-hmm. they have to work very hard okay mr vaid uh, you are a witness to the momentous uh, <coughs> uh, day of passing of the 1980 company secretaryship act so what was the profession before that what was the uh, profession after that i think it has made a lot of uh, Uh, change in the perception of the people and uh, can you just take us through briefly about that yes uh, it was a wonderful uh, journey and in fact that was the big recognition when it became a statutory body mm-hmm. that was a very big recognition and it was a um, day of celebration for all of us and uh, definitely regulations were our own <coughs> disciplinary proceedings were our own everything was our own and it came with a responsibility and the responsibility was number one to to give right direction to the profession mm-hmm. ourselves because our year it was monitored by the government mm-hmm. so we had to do our own we had to chart our own course that is one secondly proper training mm-hmm. and uh, guiding people mm-hmm. and also making our presence feel mm-hmm. in the in the industry our existence mm-hmm. and which we used to do continuous upgradation of knowledge of our students mm-hmm. of our members through study circles your brother had been very very active in north at that time very active and he was a person who used to organize very qualitative study circle meetings i must say mm-hmm. then uh, uh, we used to organize seminars national conventions and every year we used to it still continues yeah, it's still there, yeah. mm-hmm. still there. Mm-hmm. but uh, coming from since then Mm-hmm. and uh, that used to be function on all india basis so whole idea was to let the society know yeah. that there is a profession yes. then we had gone global and generally is quite yeah. interesting as a as a student you uh, know i was just uh, just passed the uh, graduation when this act was passed yes. it really it, it created interest in me yes. that you know there yes. is some profession yes. in papers also it was covered 1980 no, no. but i completed my graduation in 1980 yeah. so 
Oh. No, it, it, so that only this act was passed. Yes. That's why I, yes, yes. I have a very, very, you know, yes. good recollection of the act being passed. Correct. Then, Correct. of course, I got it to job and later on I joined the schools. Correct. So that was uh, the reason. You know, uh, uh, earlier, uh, it was very difficult to get the matching matrimonial also, yeah, you course, know, yes. because uh, if there was some matrimonial act about company security, people used to say it is a standard for you. <laughs> so the perception in the society was entirely And now by God's grace, I think with the hard work of the people, mm. of the councils, of the members and society at large, now I think those, those we have overcome all those. Great, great. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that was end of the part one of the conversation with Mr. Harish Vaid. I'll be back with part two very soon. Till that point of time, I as Prabhakar take your leave. Take care and good night.